Okay, we're going to take a look here, spend a few minutes, and tie up the Dainty Damsel a fly I came up with. Thought I'd put the package up so you can see that. Give you a short read by on what all is involved on this. You can stop the video probably and, and write down everything. I'm going to just do a quick tie on this though so you can kind of get an idea of what I've found to be an extremely valuable and well working little damsel fly. I'm going to start off with about eight wraps of thread starting right behind the eye. I'm going to wrap back about eight to ten wraps. And then I'm going to come forward about halfway. Cut off your excess. Grab a piece of four pound test mono. Uh, 4X if you want to call it that way. Lay this on here. Do a couple of quick wraps over it. Rotate it so it's crosswise and then do a figure eight around it to pull them out nice and even. You're going to grab the glass beads and here's a little trick to doing these if you want to have some fun. You grab the glass bead, stick your finger down on it and that puts you up here where it sticks to your finger. Makes it real easy to drop the glass bead onto the mono. Now as opposed to melting the mono down to hold it, I've found this is a lot better way to do it. You lose a lot less beads. On the side away from you, twist it a couple times clockwise till it throws a little loop up over the eye like that. Now two soft wraps is all I'm going to put on there for right now. Let me get the other side done. Get the bead on there. I'm going to twist this one counterclockwise or away from me. So it throws a similar loop up there. A couple more soft wraps. Not real tight, not real solid. Now the good part about doing it this way is you can now take a hold of these tails of the mono that you got the beads mounted on and you can pull them until you get it down to the width you want on the eyes for the head you're going to build on this fly. Now I can do a quick little figure eight around these. Keep them separated out. Wrap all the way, do a, do a nice clean wrap all the way back to the bend in the hook. I keep the mono laying on the hook while I do that because that makes it a whole lot easier, or a whole lot harder rather, to uh, break the mono when you hang it up on something or to pull the, pull the mono enough to pull the eye out. Gives you an extended pull on that, makes it a lot stronger. Now we're going to take some of that Wopsy, and I usually cheat kind of measure about what I want because that makes it easier than moving that packet around. Clip me off a little chunk of it. Now I want the chenille to end right behind the eyes. That's going to be my final work spot on that. Now don't worry about doing a whole lot of ribbing because the fish don't care. I'm going to do a couple quick wraps back here by the tail. Now I'm going to wrap forward a little ways. And this is just to secure the chenille so it doesn't get pulled off. Bring it forward. Wrap it good and solid up here when you get up towards the thorax. Now the thorax, again, like I said, this is a simplistic tie, fly to tie. Uh, I'm going to grab my uh, dubbing material. Grab a little pinch of this. A little bit different shade of green just to make it stand out a little bit more. You don't need a whole lot of the dubbing. Just enough to make yourself a decent thorax. Take that, spin that onto your, your thread. Pull that up. Do a couple three wraps behind the eyes and then reach down here like this. Pull the eyes. Pull that up to the top. Pull the eyes back so you can do forward head wrap in front of the eyes without trapping the eyes. Now I'm going to take that back behind it. I'm going to add a little bit more thorax back there to even it out just a little bit. Don't worry about getting this tied perfectly. All you need is the contrast in color to resemble the insect. Don't worry about legs and stuff. I'll get into that in just a second. I'm going to bring that forward. Real quick. Whip hitch. And here's another little trick to keep in mind. When you're doing the head wrap with this, I don't use head cement. I'm, I'm just going to do a five wrap, but I'm not pulling it real stout while I'm doing that. I'm going to take that, I'm going to do another five wrap over the top of that. When you get that done, reach up nice and close to the fly, 
and start pulling on it until you snap the thread. That tends to pull the thread down in and bind the threads together much like a clinch knot does. Now that tail's a little bit longer than I need, so I'm going to take this, cut a little bit off of it, and then when you're using stuff like the micro chenille, make sure <laughs> you don't forget this part because it'll come unraveled the first fish. A little bit of heat and just enough to start that tip melting down just a little bit. That's all it takes to keep it from being uh, a fall apart fly. And then what you have when you're all done is that right there. A simple little damsel nymph that I guarantee will catch fish. I just can't guarantee it'll do it while you're using it because I don't know how you're going to use it. Uh, you can pull that under the water. I usually use an intermediate sinking line on this and let it sink down depending on where I'm seeing them. Anywhere from subsurface down to six, eight feet. And I've caught everything from little three inches up to ten pounders on this thing in various lakes. And a couple little pointers on it. When you get it all done, your loops, you want your loops just loose enough that the eyes can move around a little bit like that one does. Me, uh, there we go. Find my bobbin so you can see it. That eye is free to move. That adds a little bit of action to your fly while it's moving around in the water. Hope you have a good one. Hope you tie this well and go out and have some fun with it. Like it said on the piece of paper, you can tie it in a lot of different colors just to try it out. Have a good one.